Hello everyone. Konnichiwa. Are you all ready for the Japanese class? Want to learn more Japanese? Well, we definitely will learn more Japanese today as we do in each class and also I will tell you something new today. So, let us see what we are going to do now. Over here, we have assignments for you as we do all the time. Uh, let us first go over the assignments, see what you have done at home, whether it is right or not, correct or not. Let us try that and then we will do our lesson. So, the first assignment over here is look at the picture and tell where is the Toke, Rajio, Empitsu, Shimbun, Isu, Kaban, Kagi, Tsukue in the room. So, this picture is of a room where there are a lot of objects for you and you have to tell exactly where they are. Well, last time we had we had done locational nouns and uh, this is the exercise for that. You have to tell where exactly these things are. So, well let us see. You have words like ue, shita, tonari, yoko, naka, ushiro, mai and these words you had done. So, this is what we are going to practice over here. Rajio wa terebi no ue ni arimasu. The second one over here is once again haizara. You have done this already in one of the previous lessons. Haizara wa teburu no tsukue no ue ni arimasu. In a similar manner, you have this camera over here on the table. Let us see what is the word. Well, tonari is the word and this is a tsukue, a table. It has lot of things on the table and lot of things next to the camera on the table. Tonari means next. Kamera wa haizara no tonari ni arimasu. So, arimasu is what we need to practice. Arimasu shows location of inanimate objects, where they are situated, the presence of inanimate objects at a certain point. Now, we have the fourth one for you over here is toke. Now, toke is on the wall. So, you can use ue and you can also omit ue. Well, it will be like this. Toke wa kabe no ue ni arimasu. For the time being, ue will work, but later on there is a proper verb for it and we will do the verb later. So, toke wa kabe ni arimasu. And then we have all the others as well. Soba, ushiro. Ushiro is for isu. Isu wa tsukue no ushiro ni arimasu. Then again you have ue, enpitsu wa tsukue no ue ni arimasu. Then teburu, teburu, teburu wa heya no, heya no naka ni arimasu. And so many others, shita, kaban wa tsukue no shita ni arimasu. And then the last one is shimbun naka. So, you can practice these with your partner, answer or ask questions for locational nouns, which is also equivalent to prepositions in English. In, at, on, besides, along, all these are prepositions in English, but they are used as situational uh, nouns in, locational nouns in Japanese. Now, we did how to ask how many things are there, irregular objects or triangular, rectangular, round, small objects. How would you ask how much, how many they are in number? So, well, practice telling how many apples are there in each picture. There are so many pictures, so many apples for you. We will start with one, just a review of what we did. Well, hitotsu, futatsu. Mitsu, 
四つ五つ六つ七つ八つ九つ and to Now one thing I want to tell you over here. This is i k u s u and hitotsu, futatsu, and so on till ten. To. After this is ko, counter ko, which we did like ikko, niko. Sanko and so on, right till whatever number you want. Now you would say it is randomly placed over here, and there's a reason for putting it randomly so that you do not get used to just saying one after the other. Hitotsu, futatsu, mitsu, yotsu, itsu, tsu, mutsu. Not only just that, but you could just look at a thing and immediately say what number it is. So that is the exercise over here. Now again, we have so many pictures, number of things listed. You can see. Ask your partner what this is. Well, mikan wa ikutsu arimasu ka. Ikutsu is how many? As we have already done, mikan wa mitsu arimasu, and so on. You can do for ringo. Well. Ringo wa nanko arimasu ka? Itsutsu arimasu. Instead of ikutsu, you can tell the number of objects present, and you can also ask: Is it such a number, or is it how many? How many is it? Well, ringo wa nanko arimasu ka? Ringo wa jukko arimasu. So you can ask in ikutsu as ikutsu how many and Nanko as how many? Both are used. Sakurambo wa ikutsu arimasu ka? Sakurambo wa futatsu arimasu. Then we have ichigo over here. Ichigo wa ikutsu arimasu ka? And it is yotsu arimasu. So this, I hope you did it properly and practiced at home. Match the words in group A with group B. So you have the words here. Again, practice how many it is. So well, let us see whether you did it properly or not. Hitotsu, and you have the answer right here. Keshigomu kyuko. Ringo itsutsu. Koppu mutsu. Hako juiko. Chocolate mitsu. Donuts, futatsu. Senbe, nanko. How many? Senbe. Senbe is a snack, a Japanese snack made out of rice, crushed rice, boiled rice, steamed rice, and it is flat as biscuits and is very very tasty. So, well, senbe for you over here and momo. Nanako, seven peaches. Now this assignment is write the words given below in hiragana. Well, as we are doing Japanese over here, we cannot just do it in Roman. We have to write in hiragana, and we need to practice that slowly and steadily. So let us let us see what you have done. Did you practice your hiragana properly or not? Have you learnt it or not? 
let us see it right here. Well, you have the picture of an apple uh, ringo. So, you can just check your spellings over here. Ichigo. Mikan. Isu. Empitsu. And over here you will notice that when we pronounce, we say M, but when we write, the syllable is N. Empitsu. Tamago. Saifu. And Momo. You can please check it. Now, this is also very important. We have done a lot of kanji characters so far in our previous lessons. They all look very similar. You can see, you know the words over here. The words are already done. You have memorized them. You make sentences with these words. But now, we also need to do the kanji characters because in Japanese when we write, then hiragana and kanji both are written together. All in fact, all three scripts are written together simultaneously. So, please do your kanjis as well. You know the word hon which means a book. Now, all three look similar. The one in green is right which is hon. I have already done the stroke order with you here on the board. So, well you can now see the kanji and try writing it also. Then we have han over here, han written like this. So, it is a five stroke character. Then you have tsuki which is month. Well, now you have do over here. And then you have hito, which means for person. So, this was your kanji. Please try remembering all of this. Now, we have a small radio conversation for you. Listen to this conversation and let us see how much you have understood.明日は金さんの誕生日ですか。いいえ、私の誕生日は明日ではありません。じゃあ、誕生日はいつですか。私の誕生日は2月の11日です。あら、私の誕生日も2月にあります。2月の何日ですか。6日です。What was new in the conversation? Can you tell me? Well, there was something new definitely and as you have already learnt how to tell shumi, which is hobby, how to tell where you are from, what, what is your senmon, the next question would be, well, what is your birthday, which is tanjobi. So, I will read the conversation for you once and then I will tell you exactly what it is. We have done tanjobi last time as well in our previous lesson. So, in that we did something different. We did the positive. This time, we will do the negative. Tanaka and Kim san. Tanaka and Kim, two people. Futari ne? Hai. Ja, ashita wa Kim san no tanjoubi desu ka? Iie, watashi no tanjoubi wa ashita dewa arimasen. Ja, tanjoubi wa itsu desu ka? Watashi no tanjoubi wa nigatsu no juichi nichi desu. Ara, watashi no tanjoubi mo 2月にあります。2月の何日ですか?6日です。So well, Tanjobi you already know. I am sure most of it is understood. The only new part over here is Deva Arimasen. So Tanjobi wa 
va ashita des, which is positive. Ashita means tomorrow. We have already done this time expression. Tanjobi va ashita deva ari ma sen. It is not tomorrow. So, you can also answer like this and instead of ashta, you can also put your date and ask. Tanjobi wa sangatsu mikka des ka sangatsu mikka des ka a question ka over here. Instead of ashta, time expression sangatsu mikka, the third of March. You can also ask ie watashi no tanjobi wa sangatsu mikka de wa arimasen. You can also answer like this. Now, ja tanjobi wa itsu desu ka? When? Third line, watashi no tanjobi wa nigatsu no ju ichi nichi desu. So, you can ask like this ara, watashi no tanjobi mo? Nigatsu ni arimas. Ara is just an expression where you show some surprise. Ara, oh really, is that so? Watashi no tanjobi mo, mo also you have done earlier, which means also watashi no tanjobi mo nigatsu ni arimas. My tanjobi, my birthday is also in February. Nigatsu no nan nichi desu ka? Well, which what date of February? Muika des, which is the 6th. So, you can talk like this, have a small dialogue with your friends about Tanjobi. You can tell your Tanjobi, you can ask about Tanjobi, you can give the date of your Tanjobi, and so on. This is in the script. As you can see, your translation. It is not actually a translation, but well the meaning is there. Now, you can see over here, anata no tanjobi wa itsu desu ka, jugatsu no jugo nichi desu. And if you want to say no, then ie jugatsu no jugo nichi dewa arimasen. You can change jugatsu no jugo nichi for any of these over here. Ichigatsu suitachi, Sangatsu mikka, Gogatsu niju gonichi, Hachigatsu futsuka. And you can answer in this or deva arimasen. Now, over here, Anata no. Tanjobi wa itsu desu ka? Question. That is what we were practicing. Well, over here, instead of tanjobi, as you can see over there, you can replace it with shiken, which is test kekkon, which is marriage and uh, nyugaku. Chicken, which is entrance exam or anything party, anata no party wa itsu desu ka? Any of these you can you can replace it with over here. So many are given. Shiken is test, kekkon marriage, kekkon kinenbi marriage anniversary, nyugaku shiken, of course, you can see is entrance examination. Tenrankai exhibition and Tanjobi birthday as we are doing. Over here, Kekkon is marriage and the actual marriage ceremony is Kekkon Shiki. So, you can replace Tanjobi for any of these and ask and give date as I had given you here. You can put any date over here, any month. For example, we just did Sangatsu Mikka or any of the previous in the previous slide I had given you dates. 
you can put any of those dates, the ones you have practiced and you can tell your shikin, kekkon, ten rangai, tanjobi, kekkon ki nembi, anything in this manner. Well, instead of anata, now you can add all the vocabulary that you have done earlier, which is watashi, imoto, tomodachi, okasan, any of this. You can add and use and make sentences and do a small conversation with your friend. Now, this was just revision. Well, now we are going to do something new today. I have already done the first part of this exercise with you in our previous lesson, where I told you about arimas, which means you show location of a certain object at a certain place. So, now as we have done for things, we will do for living things now. Last time we did for inanimate objects, now this time we will do for animate, for living things, for people, for animals, for people. What is the verb you will use instead of arimas? Arimas is for non living things. So, well, noun 1 wa, noun 2 ni or place ni ari mas is what we did. Hon wa soko ni arimas or we did hon wa tsukue no ue ni ari mas. This is what we practiced last time. Now, this time we will do Tanaka Tanaka san wa soko ni imas. Tanaka san is present over there. So, please for people and for animals it is imas and not arimas. Shows location of living things at a certain point, presence of living things at a certain point or place. Now, we will do this small conversation again. Listen to this and see. Rao san wa doko desu ka? Rao san wa shokudo ni imasu. Tanaka sensei mo shokudo ni imasu ka? Iie, sensei wa kaigishi ni imasu. Ano, kaigishi tsu wa doko desu ka? Kaigishi tsu wa elevator no mai ni arimasu. Arigato. Well, did you understand something? This conversation is also between two people, Anu and Arun. Well, I will read it for you. Rao san wa doko desu ka? Rao san wa shokudo ni imasu. Tanaka sensei mo shokudo ni imasu ka? Iie, sensei wa kaigi shitsu ni imasu. Ano, kaigi shitsu wa doko desu ka? Kaigi shitsu wa Elevata no mai ni arimasu. Arigato. So now you will see how arimasu and imasu are used for non-living and living things. Most of it is understood, I am sure. Doku, of course, you know where. Shokudo is. Shokudo is the canteen or the dining hall. Shokudo ni imas. So, person wa place ni imas. Imas is for existence of people, ni is for place, 
at that particular point or place or location. Tanaka sensei mo shokudo ni imasu ka? Now question, Tanaka sensei mo also you have done, also shokudo ni imasu ka? Ie sensei wa kaigi shitsu, meeting room or conference room ni imasu. Ano, if you remember we did this ano earlier, ano is just to attract attention instead of, instead of sumimasen which is a little more formal, you can use ano which is more informal. Ano kaigishitsu wa doko desu ka? Doko again you, we have done earlier means where? Kaigishitsu wa erebeta, elevator, elevator no mai ni arimasu. So, as we are talking about kaigishitsu, arimasu comes over here. It is in front of the elevator. Thank you very much. So, that is the small conversation which you can do on your own as well. Now, you know a lot of words and vocabulary and you can make sentences with the help of particles. So, try this conversation changing using different words, vocabulary that you have learned. This is in the script as you can see your translation. It is not actually a translation, but well the meaning is there. Now, as I told you earlier, imas is a verb which means to exist or to be and shows existence of a person or an animal at a certain location or point. You have examples here, you can go over the examples and see. Also, we have done locational nouns in our previous chapter. Here also we will cover a few more locational nouns for you. So, you can just go through this. Now, you have this picture here where you can see a teacher, a blackboard and some students sitting in the classroom. So, what are they going to do? How do we tell they are there in the classroom? And how many people are there? So, well, Minasan wa doko ni imasu ka? Minasan is all of them. Wa doko means where? Ni imasu ka? Where are they present? Minasan wa kyoshitsu no naka ni imasu. You can also say kyoshitsu ni imasu and remove the naka over there, but just to be more specific. Minasan wa kyoshitsu no naka ni imasu. They are inside the classroom. Sensei wa doko desu ka? So, instead of saying doko ni imasu ka, you can ask a direct question. Sensei wa doko desu ka? Sensei wa gakusei no mai ni imasu. So, sensei is in front of the students. Sensei wa gakusei no mai in front of them ni imas. Now we did with sensei, how will you use arimas over here? Kokuban which is blackboard wa doko ni arimas ka? Kokuban wa sensei no ushiro ni arimas behind the teacher and Sensei wa doko desu ka? Again, sensei wa doko desu ka? Earlier we did sensei wa doko desu ka? And there was another answer. Now, let us see what they have to say. Sensei wa kokuban no mai ni imasu. So, over here kokuban is the subject and over here sensei is the subject. So, with respect to sensei, where is the kokuban, where is the blackboard? Now, what you can do is you can practice location of the cat over here. Where exactly is the cat? Is it under the table over here? You can see under the chair, inside the box, behind the chair and on top of the chair. So, let us see what it is in Japanese. Neko wa isu no shita ni imasu.
猫は箱の中にいます。Of course, over here again, you can remove the naka over here. 猫は箱にいます is also used and correct. 猫は椅子の上にいます。On top of the chair. And we have neko wa isu no ushiro ni imasu. So, this is how you can use your uh, locational nouns that we have studied and you can tell exactly where a thing is placed or where a person is placed with respect to another thing. Now, let us see if you can give me the answers over here. Honda san wa doko ni imasu ka? Honda san wa Tanaka san no ushiro ni imasu. Behind Tanaka san. Tanaka san wa doko ni imasu ka? Tanaka san wa kaisha ni imasu. Tanaka san is in the kaisha or heya ni imasu. Heya no naka ni imasu inside the room. Well, this is a phone, so it is inanimate. Now, what is the verb that you are going to use? Will you tell me? Well, let us see what is given over here. Denwa wa doko ni arimasu ka? So, you have to remember for people it is imasu and for non-living inanimate it is arimasu. Denwa wa tsukue no ue ni arimasu. And then we have this lady over here. Hisho san wa doko ni imasu ka? Hisho wa Tanaka san no hidari ni imasu. Hidari is left. Left from where you are watching and not from where Tanaka san's hand is. So please do it like that. Now, you have done imas and arimas. Imas and arimas. You understand this very clearly. Imas is for living and arimas is for non living things. Now, you have done counting over here as hitotsu, futatsu, or ikutsu, which is how many? and so on or iko, iko, niko or nanko okay, for how many. Now, over here how will you count people? So, none is the word for none is a question word anyway and what will you add after none? Well, for people it is nin. So, it is nan nin. So, for example, if you want to ask in the previous classroom slide where sensei is there with the students you can say heya no naka ni kyoshitsu no naka ni nan nin imasu ka. So, how many people are there in the kyoshitsu? Now, we can practice over here. It is very simple with nin except for one person or two people which is hitori and Futari respectively, it is number and nin, san nin, yo nin, go nin and so on. With the number, you just add nin to it, meaning those many number of people are present at a certain place inside a room or wherever. Yo over here is an exception, hitori is an exception and Futari is again an exception. Otherwise, it is all numbers all the time. Now, you can practice. Nin is the counter used for counting people. Now, you would be understanding counters by now because we have done a number of counters so far. Well, you can look at the picture and tell how many people are there. Hitori. 
In this picture over here, you see a single person, a girl reading something, maybe thinking. So, hitori, hitori desu. Over here, we have two people, futari. Hitori and futari are the two exceptions over here. You can ask, nan nin imasu ka in the first picture, hitori desu. Nan nin imasu ka, futari desu. You have how many people can you tell me? Well, yonin, yonin desu. So, you have four people here, yonin, shashin no naka ni nan nin imasu ka, shashin no naka ni yonin imasu. Okay, now you can tell me, kono shashin no naka ni nan nin imasu ka, so you have hitori, futari, san nin. Yonin and Gonin. So, how many people are there? Well, we have Gonin. Shashin no naka ni Gonin imasu. You can practice more over here in this slide. Let us see what the question is. Heya ni nan nin imasu ka? So, hitori, futari, san nin, yonin, gonin. Rokunin, nananin, and hachinin. Let us see how many are there. Jaheani, you tell me how many people are there. Well, heani, hachinin imasu. You can practice more of this. Shashin ni nanin imasu ka? So, we have a shashin for you. Nan nin imasu ka? Minasan, dozo. Let us see. Shashin ni yonin imasu. Once again, nan nin imasu ka? Or, shashin ni gonin imasu ka? Shashin ni gonin imasu ka? What is the answer? Do we have five people here? Hitori, futari, sanin, yonin, gonin and there is one person hidden over here. So, we have six people, rokunin and the question is shashin ni gonin imasu ka? So, the answer is iie shashin ni gonin imasen, shashin ni rokunin imasu. Then we have another picture over here for you of this park and kono shashin ni nan nin imasu ka? Well, kono shashin ni yonin imasu. And as we have a picture which has four people here, you can also answer kono shashin mo yonin imasu. Is that all right? So, you can use mo also, you can use wa also, whichever you Now, what do we have over here? Now, you can ask like this, shashin ni san nin imasu ka? Iie, shashin ni san nin imasen, yonin imasu. Look at this picture, shashin ni yonin imasu ka? Iie, shashin ni yonin imasen, gonin imasu. So, instead of nan nin, you can also use the number and ask how many people are there. Now, as we always do, we will, we will do kanji also because that is also an integral part of Japanese and we need to know the kanjis. Over here, you can see there is a very complicated character but not as complicated as, as it seems actually. You can make it on the board and you will see how simple it is. You have done the word ushiro. Kokuban wa sensei no ushiro ni arimasu or for, for that matter kokuban wa watashi no 
my ni arimasu. It is right here in front of me. At the moment, it is behind. If I am looking this side, it is. If I am looking towards you, it is behind me. So, this is the word that we are going to do. Ushiro. One, two, three. One part of the kanji. One, two, three. Second part of the kanji. Then the third part is one, two, and three like this. So it's a nine-stroke character. You will see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine meaning ushiro. Ushiro. It has other meanings also, but for the time being, as we have done this word, just this one word, ushiro. We will try to remember it as ushiro. Also, if I am not mistaken, we have also done gogo as gogo that is pm meaning later. So, you can also remember it as go. It is a nine stroke character. We have another one over here for you. You have again done this word my now one two three this character you have done if you remember month and this over here so let us see how many strokes are there to this character one two three four five six seven eight and nine. So, again this is also a nine stroke character as ushiro mai 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 means front of or ahead or before. So, well two characters for you today. A few words, new words with these kanji characters. You have ato de, ato de, ushiro, ato gaki means a postscript, mai front, ahead. Mai ba is front teeth, ba means tooth, mai kaki or mai gaki is a preface. So, well, these are some words, new words with characters which you can learn and practice also. Now, The Japanese have a very typical expression they use before um, eating, before they start to eat. This expression I think we did last time, itadaki must they will join hands and then say thank you God for all the food that you are giving me. Well, what is the, what do they say after having eaten food? What is the word or the expression they use after eating and thanking God again for all the good food that he has provided. Well, the word is gochiso sama. So, you can see you join your hands and you say itadaki mas, itadaki mas, and then you say gochiso sama after finishing your food. After you are through with your food, you thank God again for all the good food that he has provided. So, go chi so sa ma. Please learn these two expressions. They are nice. They are very handy. They make you very comfortable in Japan and they also and the Japanese also like it very much that you are using their expressions very, very freely and 
nicely where they are supposed to be used. Now, this is some vocabulary, you can go through the vocabulary, we did these words in the lesson. I will just read it out once very quickly. Hidari, Migi, the meanings are given right here on the right side in black. Kokuban, Koen, Hisho, Kazoku, Akachan. Remember one thing when you are practicing at home, please practice loudly, so that you can hear what you are practicing and it helps a lot finally in the long run. Well, now my work is over and your work begins over here. You have to do your assignments at home, you have to practice all this that we have done here in class. The first assignment is this picture where you have to answer these questions over here they are given. How many people are there? How many ladies are there? How many gentlemen are there? Men are there? How many girls and boys are there? Children are there? So, try to do it with your partner in class or maybe later on after class or at home. Say it out aloud. Use the counter nin so that you remember it. Then we have this picture of a family of Tanaka san and his wife and you have to tell how old they are, how old his family members are and also you have to practice this new vocabulary over here. Ok san means wife, musuko means son, musume means daughter, mago means grandchild, otoko no hito boys again. Onna no hito, girls and akachan is a baby. So, you can practice all these with your uh, partner, remember the vocabulary and ask and have a small conversation or a dialogue. Now, look at this assignment here, ask your friend what they are going to do in their summer vacations, which is Rokugatsu, Yasumi, Natsu Yasumi. So, you have your schedule planned over here, you can see it is all planned. You have to ask, show the picture and ask what they are going to do on these dates during their summer vacation. That way you can practice all that you have done, your dates, your months your uh, days of the week, you can practice and do a small conversation. Now, practice with your partner asking where is the bank and the school and bookstore and all these things in the picture located using locational nouns with arimas and of course, imas over here if you want to. Now, we have match group A with group B, which we generally do, so that you remember your vocabulary. And then of course, this is the most important part, where you have to remember your kanji characters, which you need to write, write them in hiragana over here. So, that is all that is there for today. I want you to do these assignments at home and we will do something new again in our next lesson, next class. Till then, mata aimashou, oyasumi nasai. Thank you.